Oh, hi! Today, I'm finally showing you the bonkers costume idea I came up with. Most of them are bonkers, to be fair, but this one is a weird mashup that probably only makes sense to me, but at least a couple friends have entertained me by telling me that they thought it was a funny idea, so here we are. You may remember from earlier this year, I made my Rocket Man crossplay, and then I was thinking, what accessories could I make for this? Which it's Elton John. Of course I was thinking over the top glasses. I realized I would also want to use that same method to make a pair of big ass spectra specs. So El Tuna Love John, Luton John Good. I think just Elton Love Good is probably the most sane option here, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments because you're all much more clever than me and can probably come up with a better mashup name. Here are the pieces I'll be putting together for this absolute nonsense idea. This star crop top, which also happens to be Ravenclaw colors, which definitely helped snowball this idea into the monstrosity it has become. This white circle skirt with little star suspenders. I am gonna add a little overall panel because Luna wears overalls in the movie at some point and the original idea was to add an overall panel to it. I also posted a very short video on this last Saturday, but my kind of haphazard, but also much more functional than anything else I've made. Little spectra specs that are out of felt and I interfaced it on the back. Very simple, quick thing. I also threw together one of the radish earrings I made as part of a collab with my friends Grant and Sama probably years ago at this point. Just melted some perler beads. I put the pattern for this. It's totally free over on my Patreon. There is certainly content on there that is exclusive to the people that donate to my Patreon, but I want to start using it as a hub for patterns and stuff like this since I kind of need to link to something to show you images and downloads in the description anyway. I may as well just keep it in one little central spot without necessarily having to pay for anything, you can go and follow me over there and you can get little extras like the pattern for this guy. So yes, as for things I don't have, I need to make the panel for the overalls and then I wanna make a little top hat fascinator situation. Elton John is no stranger to tiny festive hats. So I thought that would be fun. This is just a ribbon spool that I took one half off of and that's gonna be my base and another throwback to the old bare leg sweater bed that I made my dog earlier this year. I have so much of this fucking fabric. This is what we'll be using. There's a there's a mixture of textures happening here and I think we can do something super weird with it. Possible a wig's gonna get involved later on, but we're gonna have to see how I'm feeling over the course of the next half hour or so. Enough of my bullshit, let's get into the thing. I guess I could do a here's what you need, but it's, it's just tea that hasn't been spiked with anything. I have to work later. And I also listed all the shit already. Let's do the damn thing. Since I already have my overall straps placed, I'm gonna make the panel go between where these are popping up. So that's gonna be my base measurement is between these very fashionable safety pins that are in here. So it's just under seven inches. So that's gonna be like the max width. We can go a little more narrow than that if need be. Let's see what the fabric allows. You can still see where I cut that circle skirt out of this fabric. Okay, I'm actually just gonna do one layer because the skirt is already so thin, I don't want it to look mismatched and be a more solid white than the rest of it since the rest of it doesn't have a lining. So basically, because I was lazy with the first part, I'm gonna be lazy with the second part. I think I'm just gonna cut a square that's seven inches by seven inches. Okay, I made my teeny tiny little panel. I stitched it to the top here. Now I need to move these straps to the top of the square here. And actually, why am I fucking with the safety pin still? I'm gonna stitch this to the top corner here. Do the same thing with this side. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. Move it aside. Next is doing our little tiny hat. Probably shut the sewing machine off. And now it's time to whip out the hot glue gun. I do plan to remake that video where I was making the wands and showing you how to hand sculpt with the hot glue without burning yourself for the most part, I think. That video was actually a mark in my video making thought process because I started making longer videos after that because I realized time lapses would have been super helpful. Me kind of talking through while I was making it, making it more of a make and chat style. I think if you go back in my videos, that was the last one that wasn't a make and chat and I was trying to make it a little more straightforward, but that also felt less fun. You all tell me that you like when I go on my weird tangents and stuff and I'm glad that's the case because as I always say, for better or worse, how I am on camera is how I am in real life. Maybe a little less neurotic, if you can believe that. Anyways, I, I wanna redo that video because I feel like my unnecessary need to keep it very short and 
succinct. Also didn't even show you the full project and it's just, it's not good. I don't think it's good because I don't think a lot of me comes through in it and I don't think a lot of the actual fun of sculpting with hot glue by hand came through either. It wasn't a good tutorial and it wasn't a good hangout. So anyway, I need to turn this on so we can apply this bearer costume and make it look like a lion. While that's heating up, I'm going to, I think, just tuck this under and figure out the general circle I'm gonna make. The beauty of using something like faux fur is that it's not gonna fray. So you can cut kind of intricate edges without worrying about hemming anything over. If you cut along the webbing that's holding it all together rather than cutting through the fur, that's gonna make it a much cleaner cut also and you'll just have less fluff everywhere. Don't get me wrong, there's still gonna be fluff everywhere, but this will just lessen the blow a little bit. So yeah, I, I have an idea. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna draw a vague circle shape. It's gonna get cut up into something else afterwards anyway. And this is what I mean. I don't know how well you can see this and it's obviously easier on a flat surface, but if you kind of like push your scissors up towards the webbing part, so you're cutting through that and not through the fur, it's gonna keep it with its original texture and won't have those cut lines. You know like when your mom would cut your hair when you were a kid and she'd go straight across your bangs and it looked too blunt and like it shouldn't have been cut like that? That's the kind of look that'll happen if you cut all the way through this. I actually learned about this when I was making that puppet. as a little hand puppet that my friend Brendan and I made. Well, he showed me how to make and then the two other friends that were there, Emily and Brett, it was a very collaborative effort and honestly, one of the most fun projects I've ever done because everyone else in the room was so much more talented than me and I was just picking their brains and it was an absolute blast. I'll link to that up here if you haven't seen it. It was from a few years ago so if you've come in the past three years or less you may have missed it and yeah it's an absolute blast. I do rewatch that one sometimes because it has friends in it and it's not just my face the whole time. Okay so I have my very very perfect circle cut out. I'll kind of cut it as I'm going. So I'm gonna glue the top of this baby into the center here. And then fake fur has a direction. So this is the, I don't know, the pile, I think. My friend Brendan does a great explanation of this in that puppet video, because I have used faux fur and a handful of things. It's not something I like know a ton about. So I just want to work from the side where like the fur is going down. It's like the grain of the fabric, if that makes sense. I'm going to add glue down what I'm calling the front of this. And hey, Try not to burn yourself. Glue it a little further back here and just flattening out from that front spot I just did. I don't know if what I have in mind is gonna work. And that is the joy of upcycling garbage to make your crafts because this is a spool that was gonna go in the recycling bin anyway and I saved this bear costume I'm cutting up from the garbage. It's little risk and the worst case scenario is I learn how to not do something, which I don't think people give enough credence these days. Okay, so there's a bunch of excess back here. I am going to cut from about here up, come around here and come back down. So I wanna keep the top and then this flattened part that I've glued down. So I, I've come about three quarters of the way, maybe two thirds of the way around this little hat. And I've made sure to glue the bottom edges to this lip down here. This is gonna get covered with another type of faux fur. So it doesn't need to look pretty and this will just be stuffing for something else down the road. Okay, so we have this so far. Now I have this longer pile fur, this very scraggly stuff that I think is gonna work for a lion's mane. I don't even know what's in here. This is so bad for my scissors. Why am I doing this? Okie doke, and I'm just gonna cut through the seam that's here. I can't imagine any of you will be using the same material. So like just cut off whatever piece of longer pile fur you have. Now, like a little mullet. <laughs> oh, this is so dumb. I'm going to glue this longer pile fur along the top and the back, and it's gonna just cover the bits that I've already cut off. So this is generally what we're looking at. Also, the fur is going the opposite direction, like a, like a mane getting pulled back. So now I'm gonna take one of these little flat hair clips, at least one of the sides is flat, and hot glue that to the bottom. Last but not least, I'm gonna make some little tiny eyes. I just have this sticky fabric stuff that seems to be a good golden color. Who actually, yeah, maybe like little half circle guys. Ooh, and then he needs at least like a little nose. Yeah, that'll do. That will do, pig. Meh, you know, that's the last piece. So let's put it all together and see what we have. Ooh. Okay, so I wasn't actually like super into this until I put the wig on. Living my best life over here. Oh my God, these fucking Spectre Specs and the tiny hat. I... 
what is happening? I don't know if you can even see my eyes. I can actually see surprisingly well out of these things. And they're actually taped over my regular glasses so I can legitimately actually see properly with my prescription and everything. Oh my god, the little tiny panel. I can't. It's also, it's covering my, my chest hole, so it's fine. My ribs are still sticking out, but that's just that's what my ribs do. We did it. This has been a wild October. I hope you guys liked the couple of costume things at the end. I mean, if you're new around here and you aren't familiar, I put costume stuff up throughout the year. It's just a passion of mine to make dumb shit like this. Sometimes they're a little more helpful to more practical people that don't want to dress like Elton John and Luna Lovegood put together, but uh, this one's for the dreamers, you know? And this was just super fun to make, so regardless of anybody actually sitting and watching and enjoying this, I enjoyed myself. Okay, well, this has been a time. I have to go to the post office now, so I think I'll probably change before that happens. I do post new videos every Wednesday afternoon and Saturday morning, so certainly feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to find me other places on the internet in the meantime, I have a Twitter and Instagram. As I mentioned earlier, I have a Patreon, both exclusive and free content, so come check it out and hang out. And if you like what you see over there, feel free to pitch in. Oh, this is... This is going very well. <laughs> this is a good sales pitch. <laughs> if you'd like better handmade things than whatever's happening here, I do have an Etsy shop if you'd like to check that out. I'll link to everything in the description also. Oh, whoa. and before I go, if you're watching this on November 2nd, the day it's coming out, I will be participating in my friend's Extra Life campaign. It's a 24 hour gaming live stream to raise money for Boston Children's Hospital. I will be participating for the overnight shift. So if you'd like to come check it out, I'll put a link in the description and I'll be there probably like dinner time to breakfast time. So come hang out and watch everything get really goddamn weird while we try to stay awake overnight And super thank you to anybody that's donated in the past There will be a link to where you can donate if you would like to check it out and uh, yeah Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and go be productive with my day and I will see you all back here with another video Wednesday afternoon Thanks for hanging out Seeing these gams underneath is gonna be fun